afternoon to everyone. Um, I, I am here to present in behalf of my collaborators. I am presenting in this paper. I am very much indebted to my collaborators, Dr. Kudiman. So we have people from the Institute of Chemistry, Dr. Aileen Medesinor, Dr. Vajini Namor, and Dr. Christina Nandes. So those are my <coughs> collaborators from um, in Kudiman. Okay, so just a brief introduction or sense of context about this, about this uh, presentation. Um, I am a part of a, a small university, uh, the Department of Forensic In fact, Asia Science is just made up of around 800 students, of around, including graduate and composed of around 800 students, or both students. So compared to the Spaniards and compared to the Guinea and the Guinea, it is quite a small university. So also I graduated uh, PhD in botany here at the Spaniards and my thesis was on uh, plant kingdom interactions, but primarily looking at uh, ritualistic uh, relationships between fungus and plants. And uh, as highlighted earlier on by Dr. Linnaeus when she was talking about um, the promise of symbiosis, uh, the interaction of microorganisms with their hosts. They are primary targets for the isolation of interesting compounds because of the unique interaction between the host and the bacteria. In this particular context, the relation in this, in this paper, I will be trying to expound more on the relationship or rather the source of the, of, of the interesting activities would be from fungi that are interacting uh, symbiotically with plants. Um, in relation to, so as mentioned, uh, in the abstract that is found in our uh, program, uh, the, this part, uh, the project, so essentially I started out looking at fungi uh, as promising uh, sources of probiotic compounds when Kipibabi was given a uh, uh, project or a uh, proposal from Kipibabi was funded in 2014. And since that started out everything until that moment. The first, uh, these are the uh, projects that have been funded. Uh, we try to look at and extract uh, from different projects. Essentially, um, we were able to isolate around 355 uh, fungi from uh, six plants, from six plants. Uh, the plants should be, uh, should be worth a little more. And then there were the, these good extracts were um, subjected to different bioassays, and these uh, different bioassays were conducted at the beginning. And then at the moment, uh, because we have already got the results from the different bioassays, we are looking at the uh, Relatively upscale batch fermentations in order to get uh, the active fractions from this uh, fermentation process. Um, as mentioned, we have, uh, I have used um, several, uh, I have eight, eight, eight plants, so I got one from a bright pipe, two from two fern plant species, two genus ferns, two that cause it to one cause. And at present, Dr. Um, Lee uh, earlier mentioned that uh, knowing that uh, all laboratories, uh, laboratories are not created equal, some would have more um, capacity to perform several assays, and some would be uh, more limited, and that would be the case for everybody. So, in order for us to be able to uh, perform at par, uh, we need to collaborate, and that was part of the reason why we had to collaborate with the laboratories. So these are the different plants where I collected, where we collected uh, upon uh, ten to five. Uh, we have uh, a liverwort, we have uh, a tree fern, and we have the yeah, underswell fern. Uh, we have five species, of course, by the is famous for uh, the varieties that it has. So we collected from those. This is a wild strawberry. So we collected from the leaves also. This is a common plant also in Bali City. This is a typical uh, Mexican sunflower. And then we have uh, two monocots here. Uh, typical weeds also that we find. Uh, 
in relation to how uh, in, in relation to the the general framework within which the project worked within was this. So this is uh, it's a typical framework for uh, drug discovery process, but it is something that was uh, internally generated by the our public agency of the DOSD. So in relation to the project, we were more on this side, on the sample collection, extraction, looking at, of course this would be looking at and providing the extracts to our collaborating laboratories. And then basing on their result, we would then be upscaling the fermentation process in order to uh, extract uh, more amounts of these bioactive extracts. So hopefully, um, we are, the project is trying to move into this particular track here in the drug track, as opposed to those that are going to the urban track. So at the moment, as mentioned, we have isolated 350 fungal isolates, and we have identified uh, at least in the uh, genus level, we have 200, and then uh, we have produced uh, 306, we have 12 projects. And these are a few of the results that we produced, <coughs> our preliminary results. Uh, the anti-infective assay was uh, done by the laboratory of Dr. Vicenna Kotechon at the uh, beginning. And um, she tested it out on four pathogen uh, vaccine. One would be on staph oils and then on the physicine physical staph oils. Uh, our extracts were also tested on Tetrachena um, DNA and on Erodinona, Pseudomonas Erodinona. And uh, these columns here, these are the uh, concentrations or the amount of extract that we provided their lab. And then these were the uh, percentage inhibition that was uh, determined uh, at higher cost at 50 micrograms per ml. And this was the, or uh, this is the uh, percentage inhibition at 5 micrograms per ml. So looking at our preliminary results, uh, we can see that we have promising isolates here, so around um, 94, at least for MRSA, more specifically, we have um, extracts that are that have this particular percentage inhibition up to 56. So all of, uh, we were only able to send for at least the laboratory of the position, but just able to process around 65 of our good extracts. So the majority of the remaining um, 300 or around 275 extracts are not yet tested. And we are in the process of doing that in our lab. Uh, this is also another assay performed <coughs> by the laboratory of Dr. Evangeline Moore. And uh, she tested it out on the inhibition of uh, cyclooxygenase. Fox2 and Fox1 inhibition. And these are the different, again, these are just a few of our um, extracts that perform relatively well as compared to all the others. So, uh, and uh, what was, according to Dr. Amor, uh, we are looking for um, a Fox2 to Fox1 ratio of greater than one. Because uh, in relation to uh, the usability or functional efficacy, uh, at the information agents, uh, it is better for uh, a higher cost to be shown than uh, cost one. These are also our results for one uh, assay on anti diabetic and uh, on, on the diabetes. And these are also, <coughs> the process is also performed by the lab of Dr. Imagine in the Again, we have several um, isolates performing relatively well. And we, in fact, we have these uh, two isolates here, coming from the Chronopolis, which has a um, very high, around a nearly 100 plus this is up here, percent inhibition. These are uh, our promising isolates for, for extracts that we can uh, work on. Uh, the, the lab of Dr. Uh, Hernandez, Christine Hernandez, uh, was in charge of looking at 
but the but this was not exactly right. And uh, initially, we have sent to another collaborator to the Institute of Chemistry to Dr. Hias Kuno, because he's a natural products chemist, and she has run one of, just one of our samples in, in high resolution mass spec, and this is our um, results. So, what is important here, at least in that in that particular uh, sub material or extract that uh, we said, there was uh, the detection of pacatin three. Uh, Pacatin 3 is a precursor for the production of Paclitaxel um, or Paxol. Of course, we know that Paxol is a, is, um, a multi-pillion drug against cancer. And it just says that um, in that particular, although we, of course, we are not asking for anti-cancer at the moment, but the thing is this, the presence of this particular compound supports or at least is, um, encourages us that there is something in our pretext and we just need to process that further. We are also looking, uh, looking forward, this was also presented by Dr. Uh, Reyes earlier on, that uh, many of the biosynthetic gene clusters are referred to as cryptic, which means that they are not usually uh, expressed in the laboratory condition. So obviously, at the laboratory conditions, we provide all the necessary growth factors to our organism such that we do not really need to uh, express any secondary metabolite because they do not, they do not need to. They have nobody to compete against so because we provide all the things we So in this particular case, the genes of interest are usually silent. They are uh, turned off. So what we are, uh, we have, this is a current funded project of Sobali, CHRD University. And we are trying to introduce small molecules, molecules, and genetic modifiers. Uh, we have identified um, these two, five uh, anthocyanidine, uh, several amylate hydroxamic acid. We also have identified five valproic acid, uh, glutinamide, and soju -butyl. So those are um, a few of the epigenetic modifiers that we are now using on our combinations. So. Um, uh, we are expecting that um, uh, there will be more uh, compounds that are produced this time because of the presence of the small molecule of the genetic modifiers. Another uh, target of ours would be for to improve the, the effectivity or the efficacy of existing antibiotics. Of course, we know that um, antibiotic resistance is because of several uh, things. One uh, would be the increased penetration of our antibiotics into our target uh, bacteria. Uh, the bacteria having uh, are able to exclude the, uh, the entry of this antibiotic. Second would be the enzymatic degradation or modification of the antibiotics. Uh, the beta-lactamase enzymes, they degrade as the beta-lactam antibiotics. And the third would be uh, even if they do not degrade these antibiotics, they have these mechanisms to uh, exclude or to, to exclude all of these uh, organisms of oh, these antibiotics outside the cell. And we refer to them as the influx forms. So at the moment, we are using, we will be testing our uh, fungal extracts against the, it, it, it's able to inhibit uh, beta lactamases, and if it is able to inhibit. Uh, Influx groups. And this is uh, a collaboration with St. Louis University. Uh, we will be uh, performing this uh, in the next few years, which is also a funded research uh, position. So, in summary, uh, maybe I would like to emphasize in this particular case why we, we focused on fungal enterprise and enterprise. Um, fungal enterprise are are unique because they are found within plants, but those plants do not exhibit any external signs of infection. So we do not see any disease symptom. We are looking also for epiphytes because in the on, on leaf epiphytes, because on the leaves, uh, typically the leaves are do not contain a lot of uh, nutrition. So uh, a lot of complication, a lot of inhibition, trying to inhibit their neighbors are happening there. So that's why we targeted 
are human enterprises and enterprises. And we have found out that uh, these uh, fungi here are able to produce uh, compounds with various bioactivities. We have an approach that were uh, mentioned. And obviously, there are more to be discovered as per Hawksworth uh, publication. We have only scratched the surface of the biodiversity of Fuji. Around uh, five to seven percent are described, are described. So the rest remain undiscovered and undescribed. So these are uh, uh, organisms that are of prime importance of interest in relation to the discovery of uh, bioactive compounds. Uh, as mentioned, uh, we need to uh, see what is there. And then we need to see also what this can offer to us in relation to the production of novel compounds. Thank you very much for listening. Again, I would like to thank uh, PCHRB as our public agency and our collaborators. Thank you very much.